Hi, Misha here, and it's another Gun of the Day episode. And today, my Bulgarian Makarov PM chambered for 9 by 18 PM, commonly known as 9 millimeter Makarov or just 9 mm space M as it's often marked on American guns for import. Now this is not my original, my first Bulgarian Makarov. It's my second or third. But I did purchase one of these pretty early on right as they were coming into the country. So right around 2000, 2001. And I had a couple of reasons for doing it. At that time, I did have a, a Volther PPK. And a friend who was pretty instrumental in getting me into guns told me this was like a PPK, but obviously it was a lot cheaper and more durable and more powerful. Even then, because the PPK I owned at the time was a World War II example, I was mindful of shooting it too much. Plus, 32 was just kind of expensive. So he didn't take much to top me into buying one of these. I like the Comblock connection. Read up on them. I mean, this thing is, is he promoted it to me. Pretty much all steel. Most of the parts do double duty. They are just built like, well, like you'd expect. It's definitely the Kalashnikov version of a, of a handgun. And it, at the same time, really does have a lot in common with the PPK, which appealed to me. The, uh, the takedown method is the same by pulling the trigger guard. It has a combination safety decocker, although it's reversed on this versus the Makarov. Frankly, I think this is a, a better system the way that it goes. Double single action trigger, about the same length of barrel. Has an 8 round mag, although it is heel release. And who doesn't like communist stars on their communist Bakelite grips. Also, who doesn't like the price point? When I picked this up at the store, it was $89.95 plus tax. And that got you the gun, two mags, holster, steel cleaning rod, rope, or I guess it was like a leather strap lanyard, come to think of it. And you got both grips. You got the military Bakelite grips in the box, loose. And you got some butt-ugly thumb rest grips, which were installed for point purposes to comply with the 1968 Gun Control Act. What was interesting about how that law was written and has been interpreted, guns had to have enough points for importation, but once they were here... It didn't matter. So you'll see some, like Russian Makarovs, to get enough points, they'll put on adjustable target sights in the rear. Other guns, like the Glock 19, have a quote-unquote target trigger, meaning it has ribs. And guns like this, they brought them in and they added target grips, thumb rest grips, to get enough points. But again, once they were sold you completely legally could take those off. And that's what pretty much everyone did. On top of that, I really liked the 9x18 cartridge back then, and I still like it to this very day. I find it fun, powerful. Honestly, I find it better than 380. And it's actually thanks to buying Makarov's so early that I never got into 380. I had 32 for like my PPK and I had 9 Makarov and I just saw no reason to get the 9x17 9 millimeter curves round. Plus it just seems like Makarov guns are more reliable than the 380 guns. Yeah, a Bulgarian Makarov, even if it wasn't this one, started my love affair with the guns. And soon after, I picked up a Polish P64, a Hungarian PA-63, 
and eventually a couple of Russians, and eventually the Czech VZ-82, and those finally started coming in in 2005. But even today, I still enjoy shooting these. This one here is one of the, I believe they were what, Estonian or Latvian guns that came in a few years back. And uh, funnily enough, one of the people that helps me out at the shop is a part-time employee. He ended up taking one. Jay got one. And I kept one because I hadn't had a bulgy Mac in a few years. So we all actually own one of these right out of the same import box. Luckily, I had ordered enough so everyone could get one. These come just soaked in Cosmoline. And that was another early lesson when I first bought my original Macarau was how to get Cosmoline out of a pistol. <laughs> and I remember the, the friend was telling me, he, he went and told me to buy, you know, he was with me. We, we bought a can of gun scrubber and he showed me to disassemble it and basically put it in a big bowl and commented that after you spray the gun scrubber it will kind of melt and look like uh, look like honey in the bottom of the bowl. I guess if your cause mine's not too dirty it, it would. Although some honey's dark brown, right? So that was kind of an early learning experience and really just the Makarov in general was a great handgun for a young gun owner to learn on, much like an SAR-1 or a Mosin Nagant or an SKS are great rifles to learn on too because these are very forgiving guns they're easy to field strip there's not a lot to break and even if you do break something they're very easy to for example replace firing pins or uh, recoil springs and magazines are uh, easy to come by back then and today you can still usually pick up a mag for 10 to 15 bucks if you're not caring about the country too much. So even though this isn't my very first bulgy Makarov, it represents a gun that I've had on and off for 20 years and that really I think everyone should have. So yeah, if you'd like to know more about the history, we have an entire playlist dedicated to 9 by 18 that this is in. And we've covered the Russians and even some submachine guns like the PM-63 and VZ-61 Scorpion slash VZ-82 Scorpion in this caliber. It's just a particular favorite of ours. I had some friends back in college that didn't like Makarovs, but... Well, I can't call them communists because communists like Makarovs, so I don't know what they were. Doofies, I guess. <laughs> They're just fun guns. Under 100 bucks, it was a no-brainer. But even at the modern price of around 250 to 300, you still get a really good solid gun. And some of the newer imports like these were almost in brand new condition. Some of the older ones that were 100 bucks were a little worn. I mean, they still had tons of life in them. You know, they had more bluing wear and whatnot. So there's been all kinds of batches over the years. Well, anyway, hope you're enjoying this Gun of the Day series. Just trying to hang out with you all during this uh, COVID-19 silliness and show you that Jay and I are both here. And Hey, feel free to chat below if you need us. Feel free to email. Uh, we'll try to be as responsive as we can be. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd really like to help support the channel... Please check out the link to our Patreon page, but if you can't, we totally understand money's tight for everyone right now. So you just staying here and supporting us is, is great anyway. With that said, this is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.